Welcome back everyone. So here we are back at the Tandy 1000 HX. This is the machine that we saved in the previous video. Um, just a little recap, it had, a, it had one problem and that was a broken solder joint somewhere in the VGA connector. So simply reflowing and adding solder to each pin solved the problem. And uh, here it is, it's running condition. But I don't think we're out of the woods just yet. But before we get into that, I'm going to do a quick recap. Now, this is the computer that my father bought uh, for the family in 1990. He bought it on um, March, according to the receipt, March 20th, 1990. Um, here's the original sales slip and the extended warranty that we never used. So they carry an agreement for one year for both the monitor and the PC. And just like I mentioned in the previous video, the original Tandy CM5 CGA monitor has been lost um, due to some horse trading I did a few years ago. That being, I sold the Tandy 1000 TX and I advertised it with a monitor without thinking. And that monitor was the one that came with my original Tandy. But it all worked out in the end because I found a local seller who happened to have a one of the nicest CM11 monitors I have ever seen. This thing looks brand new. Um, it has a razor sharp, for CGA anyway, uh, image. And it produces vivid color. I love it. There's not a scratch, not a, not a crack, not a, not, a, not a blemish on it, uh, which is pretty unusual. And for what I paid for it, I'll just call it the, whoops, I shouldn't have done that tax. Um, <laughs> shouldn't have sold that monitor, but hey, what happens, happens, you know? So, in this video, I want to do a demonstration of Tandy Deskmate. When my, when my father brought this machine home and uncrated it, um, so my dad worked during the day and my mom worked at night. Um, she worked at the she worked at a McDonald's that was actually almost within walking distance of our house. And he was an auto mechanic. Um, they were in their mid twenties. They were very young when they had me. And um and I was just a little five year old uh kindergarten kid. And uh, my dad brought this home. He was all excited. He was like, We're finally entering the computer age. And um the funny thing is I've heard stories from, you know, baby boomers who um, were the first on their block to have a television set, color or otherwise. And I'm here to tell you that as a millennial, I was, we were the first household in our entire neighborhood to have a computer. Um, no one in our family, none of my friends, nobody had computers in 1990. Well, nobody in our circle except for one or two people. And it was one of my mom's best friends who suggested that, you know, was, she had a computer, it was her mother's. And, um, you know, her mother was an early adopter as well. And uh, she suggested that we get one and my mom was all excited. She tried to pressure my dad, can we get one, can we get one? You know, computers are expensive. I mean, this whole package set my parents back uh, five, $600. Where's the, where's the total? It was seven twenty-two thirty-nine. Is what this sucker cost. And uh, just just as a quick reference here, we have a CM5 color monitor at two ninety-nine ninety-five, a Tandy one thousand HX at two hundred ninety-nine dollars, a copy of Speller B for thirty-four ninety-five. That was for me, and a package of three three and a half inch double-sided diskettes, six dollars and seventy-nine cents, um, six outlet. Surge protector, $29.95. And he bought a warranty for the monitor for $22.50 and a warranty for the computer for $29.25. So $722 was a lot of money in 1989 for an auto mechanic and a McDonald's uh, fry cook, you know, to scrounge up, especially when they were raising a family and in the process of buying their first home. Oh, and by the way, right after we bought this computer, we found out that my mom was pregnant for what would become my sister. And uh, so a lot of things happened at that time period financially for my parents that weren't 
what wasn't great. Um, you know, they were stressing out their finances a little bit. So they didn't have the money to buy a printer, to buy the expanded memory module, to buy, um, you know, a proper desk and chair. And, and, and not only that, but we had really no software. The only software we had were a couple of games. I have one of those original discs right here. This is a game that was given to my parents um, by one of their friends who did own a computer. And this contains a few different, uh, a few different items just crammed on one diskette, and this disc still works to this day. Um, so, you know, it was, it was a different time. They were, they were really, you know, not doing well, um, <laughs> well enough to justify blowing money on computer stuff that we really didn't need at the time. And the idea was, you know, I kept asking my dad, when are we going to get a printer for this computer? And he says, we'll get one eventually, we'll get one eventually. He just kept kicking the can down the street, you know, so to speak. Until eventually I actually needed a computer with a printer. This was in the mid-90s, 95 or so. And it was expected of me as, as a, you know, a, a middle school student that I have a computer with a printer at home. It wasn't required, but it was kind of like, by that point, you know, my classmates all had, you know, computers at home. Most of them did. Not all of them, but most of them did. And um, I had this useless Tandy 1000, which had no software, no printer. And the only software we did have, you know, personal deskmate, for example, um, half the disk was damaged. So most of the utilities didn't even work anymore. It was like, all right, enough is enough. <laughs> So I eventually, in, in, in 95 or so, 96 maybe, I scrounged up some junk computer stuff and I ended up with a, uh, a, a usable computer. It was a, an 8088 class XT system basically with a, with a repurposed Commodore dot matrix printer. Uh, Commodore MPS 1250 if I recall is what I had for a printer. So the Tandy 1000 ended up in the closet almost for the rest of its existence, and that's where it's been ever since. It was stored away, never really got any airtime, so to speak. Um, so here we are in 2021. It is the Tandy 1000's time to shine. I do plan on, I actually just, just today I ordered um, a kit. Hold on a second. So through the magic of the interwebs, I actually found a gentleman who was producing um, a quantity of um, expansion, three-in-one expansion uh, boards for the Tandy 1000 HX and EX. And his expansion module consists of 640 kilobytes of RAM, 96 kilobytes of upper memory for DOS and drivers, a 9-pin RS-232 serial port, an XTCF light interface for storing software. And unfortunately, he has no he has ended production of these boards, but he still sells the empty PCBs and the parts to assemble one plus the Mauser parts list um, that you have to order from. And you can basically hand solder and make your own expansion board. So Fortunately, um, those are still available. There aren't many left. I'm fairly certain that once they're gone, they're gone for good. So I feel that I, I'm, I'm fortunate that I can still get that custom board that was made, plus the um, custom adapters and plugs and such that go with it. Um, a lot of those are hard to find. I think he had some parts custom manufactured for these kits. Um, but basically, he's run out of assembled stock and is no longer building them, so he's only selling the the parts as a DIY kit, but you have to buy all the electronic components, which, hey, I'm fine with that. So we will be expanding this machine. Um, I, I, of course, I have to then source a CF card for it as well um, for storage, but uh, this could be a very interesting project moving forward. So, without further ado, let's fire this beast up. Now, as I've mentioned before, this sucker runs DOS 2.11 and ROM. I'm gonna show you a couple of things. So, I was able to find the original software for this machine off the internet, as I mentioned earlier. And um, I'm gonna do one thing first. We're going to turn off the, um, I'm gonna use my DOS 2.11 diskette. 
And I want to turn off the memory count on startup. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so in drive A, let's see. It's going to be setup HX is the tool that I want to run. Oh, this does actually have basic on it, doesn't it? I just realized that basic is actually built in to the original DOS. This is not a boot disk. I need to mention that. This is not a boot disk. The Tandy 8000 has DOS and ROM, so it actually boots off. That's one of the fastest, if not the fastest, booting computer ever built. So, um, we're not going to prompt for date and time. We are not going to run memory diagnostics on startup. Okay? And I wanted to start up primary startup device would be memory. If I were to upgrade to DOS 3.1 or 3.3, .3, I could change this to disk so that it'll ignore the startup files on the ROM chip and it will allow me to boot from a floppy disk. I wanted to start up in menu, I'm sorry, MS-DOS. Computer speed, this is where we select the uh, clock speed. 4.77 or seven and some change uh, megahertz. Disk buffers, config sys on drive A, no. Auto exec on drive A, no. Internal drive A versus external. We can select our language. We can even select our power line frequency, which is kind of neat. And then I'm going to F1 to update the EEPROM. Change is now made. And when I power cycle the machine, it should boot up instantaneously without memory test. There it goes. Look at that, so fast. All right, let's go ahead and launch Personal Deskmate. So I, like I said, I spend a lot of my time watching Saturday morning cartoons, playing with the Art Paint tool. Um, so we're gonna launch that right now. Now Deskmate was Tandy's um, kind of a do-it-all type application. Um, it has a lot of different functions, even some unusual ones, like it has a built-in music creator that makes full advantage of the, um, or takes full advantage of the three-voice sound processing chip that these machines have. Um, but there's a notepad, there's a calendar. Again, these computers don't actually have a clock battery, so the calendar is useless unless you set the date and time on startup. So. Let's go ahead and see if it can advance as far as 2022, or uh, 2021. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, let's see. Let's see how far up it goes. Let's see how optimistic Tandy was in their own systems. Well, we're up to 2020. There we go, 2023. Set it to 2021. The um, it is now February 1st, 2021. Doesn't let me set the actual date though. Huh. Okay then. No, huh? You can't set the date. Yeah, it doesn't let me do that. Okay. Well, that's fine. Oh, that's not how you set the date and time. That is how you, or that just shows you the calendar. So. so anyway, as I was saying, this utility, um, that being Deskmate, did come in a variety of flavors, and some of them are oddly system specific. Um, this particular version only runs on the 1000HX. It will not run on any other model, and no other version will run on the 1000 HX. It's the strangest thing. Um, so it almost seems like Tandy was self-defeating in making sure that these machines were just different enough to, to cause heartache. And um, thankfully I was able to find images of these discs. Otherwise, I don't know what else I would do. I, I mean, there was uh, one website that actually has the images for these. And I'm going to show you that link right now. 
and this is where I found the images for those diskettes. And like I said, they are specific to certain models in some cases. So the 1000HX version is listed, I think it's a little bit further down. Where did I find it? It's on here, I swear to God. Um, Oh, I might be on the wrong the wrong uh, site here. Let's see. No, I think I'm on the wrong site. Anyway, it's it's there somewhere. Um, <laughs> hold on, I'll find it. Here it is. I'm going to try to put a link to this um, in the description of the video so it's easier to find. Uh, but this is where you're going to find most of these system disks for certain models. And the HS, hxdisks.zip contains all the files that you will need to rebuild your system disk set, um, which should only include, or con which should only consist of two diskettes, one of them containing Personal Deskmate 2 for the HX specifically and one of them containing the, the DOS files that are not bootable. So the DOS disk is not bootable. Um, it is this guy right here. What I mean by that is command.com resides in the ROM chip, so you don't need to worry about formatting this as a bootable disk, which makes it a lot easier. You just don't need to extract a disk image to a diskette. It just makes it a little bit easier to work with. One less utility that you need. Um, but the one thing that I'm finding is I've made some clandestine fake 720k diskettes and it seems to be hit or miss. What I've been doing is I've been taking 1.44 megabyte diskettes and blocking the uh, size detection hole to make it look like a 720k diskette and unfortunately it didn't work 100% of the time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Moving along, let's take another look at Personal Deskmate 2.0, and uh, I will zoom in the camera a little bit, and we're going to do some. Let's take a little bit of the boo. Let's take a look at the text editor, and um, let's see what kind of functionality you get from uh, from the Tandy 1000 text editor. Um, so let's see. Go to F2 for file, edit text. So you have um, a couple of you have plain, bold, or underlined. You cannot select a different font from the default. It does allow you to print as long as you're using a Tandy compatible printer, which there are only a couple of them available. Um, I'm going to actually search for a printer for this thing. Once I figure, I'm going to go through the Radio Shack catalog and try to find one that closely matches the age of the machine. I do have a Tandy printer, but it's not one that is compatible with the HX. So. And remind you, remind you again that these these machines did not have parallel ports. Um, they had a special Tandy, I believe it was actually a serial-based printer. I'm uh, not sure about that exactly, but um, so let's do some some text uh, editing here. I'm going to oh let's see if it lets me um, page setup. No, yeah, there's no um, there's no centering or. You know what this reminds me of? This is almost like a watered down version of uh, Mac, uh, what is it? Apple Works. It's kind of like an Apple Works, um, only not as good. <laughs> Strangely enough, I found something worse than Apple Works. Um, this is a test document written on, on the Candy 1000 HX. And it shows you some of the um, background characters, the hidden characters. So Carriage Return shows up as what looks like the, oddly enough, is the Google Chrome menu icon, which is kind of funny. Um, there you go. Now I can save to the diskette, but I'm going to show you something. Now there's another hardware problem. We're going to dive into this later in the video. We're going to make this interesting. I won't be able to save this to the disk. Watch this. So if I go to File, 
save as test whatever. It's actually, funnily enough, it uses a dot doc extension for documents. Watch this. Attempt to write to protected drive. So it thinks that every disk I put in it is write protected, which means that the write protect switch on the floppy drive is not working correctly. And that is what we're going to look at later on in the video. So I'm going to go back to file. I'm going to go ahead and quit this. Do not save changes because I can't anyway. This is a defect I think I can figure. I think I can solve this one. I think what happened is the right protect pin either broke off or just plain doesn't work. And we're gonna we're gonna look at that. So that's our text editor. I'm gonna show you a sample budget worksheet that came with the machine. Let's take a look at that. Now this is built this is baked right into the um, into the original deskmate uh, disk set. <coughs> it just gives you a sample budget um, from 1987. Let's see how much things cost back then. So again, this is kind of like a an Excel or um, like an uh, what was a comparable um, Visicalc. It's kind of like a Visicalc um, clone, but not quite, not as good. So what are the options in the file menu here? Same thing as uh, the text editor, merge, page, print, quit, run. Column width, insert column. Can I set it so that the cells actually show up? Column width, delete columns, insert row, calculate. Yeah, this is really super watered down. Yeah, I can't make it show the, it doesn't show the cells or the cell walls. But groceries, $250 for the month, actual was $217. Mortgage, $720 a month, actual is $720. Clothing, $150, actual $129. Power or light, $65. Gas is $50. Car is $145. Um, their total budget in 1987 was $1617, budgeted and $1482 actual for the month um doesn't seem that crazy does it it's, it almost sounds like that could be a legitimate budget even today um for the most part but maybe not maybe not so that's our worksheet application it even tells me it just says seven percent full so the disc actually has room on it but it's not writable notepad I think you're supposed to just write notes, and they're supposed to be saved in this little box here. File does not exist. Swap, create, or cancel. I would hit create. Unfortunately, we get that error. So we're going to have to figure this out. I want to show you two more things. One of them is the music creation application. And um, you'd be mightily surprised if you've spent a lot of time working on XT class workstations how actually reasonable the sound quality is on the Tandy 1000. Again, it's a three voice sound processor, uh, which is a little bit better than the beep, boop, beep of your average, you know, IBM PC of the time period. Of course, Apple blew them out of the water with the Apple II GS, which came out around the same time as the Tandy 1000, but the 2GS was a premium system at a high, high cost in comparison. So let's go ahead and play this audio file that is, uh, is included with our diskette. And I think I have to hit the tab key. Yeah, there we go. Play.
Okay. Very impressive. Um, you know, for a what was ultimately a budget grade entry level computer, um, they actually did put a little bit of effort into the sound processor. So the slight advanced uh, sound processing capabilities of the Tandy 1000 uh, HX and I believe the EX as well. Um, again, they were better than you, what you would get in a typical PC, but not as good as what you would have with a sound card or a, a better and higher end machine like the Apple II GS, which was a competitor to the Tandy 1000 series. Um, but it positioned the Tandy 1000 or certain models anyway, as being superior for computer gaming. Many game developers created two separate soundtracks for their games. One soundtrack was designed to use the standard PC speaker, and the other soundtrack was designed when run on a Tandy 1000 to make use of that beautiful three-voice sound controller chip. Um, if you look at some of the files in a lot of your old DOS games from the early 90s all the way back to the mid 80s, you may find certain files called Tandy or whatever. Um, you'll also find graphics files in those games that are CGA, EGA, or Tandy. And when you run those games, it'll ask you in some cases, what machine are you running it on? And, and that's all because of that beautiful sound that these machines can produce. There are three other songs on this disc, but we're not going to bother playing them. Um, this is one of the features that we lost probably by about 1991 or so. Um, part of the disc got damaged, and this sound uh, or, or music application would no longer run. So, um, you know, that, that's a thing that happened. And so this is actually my first time ever hearing these songs. Um, ever. <laughs> Even though I've had this machine for 31 years, we just never had the, um, we never had that functionality because the disc became corrupt. The only time I remember hearing this thing produce music was probably within the first week or two of, uh, of us owning it. And my dad was playing with some of the songs. I think he was playing the Christmas song or something like that. And I heard it back then, but I could never get it to work because the disc was damaged. This machine has had a very tragic but hopefully redeemed life at this point. There's an inventory program. I don't know what that's for. Um, we've got, uh, let's see, art paint. Now, art paint is what I spent a lot of my time playing with because I love to draw. And as I mentioned earlier, I loved Saturday morning cartoons. So what I would do is I would just sit here for hours and hours and I would draw and paint and um, while watching, you know, Pee Wee's Playhouse or Garfield and Friends, I'd be on the other side of the living room just kind of drawing things and, and here we are. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a couple of boxes and we're going to play with some of the fill options. And so I'm going to go ahead and use the straight line tool. I'm going to give this an angle here so you can see what it can do. It's kind of like a glorified Etch-a-Sketch. We'll make a rhombus. How does that sound? A couple of poly polygons. Oops. Now, Tandy, or Radio Shack, whatever you want to call it, um, they did offer a light pen for this machine. And, oh yes, I want to change the color of the lines. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the, the tool menu. If you listen carefully, you can actually hear the processing in the, in the, uh, the, the bits moving around through the PC speaker. It's done that since day one. That's not a, that's not a malfunction. All right, so I'm going to go to options F5. And I'm going to change my line color. I can change the width, I can make it thicker, I can make it thinner. And then I'm going to go to line color and I'm going to select orange. And I'm going to go back to the tool here. Okay, we'll start the line. Let's see. I'm pretty sure I selected orange, but it's still red. 
but it is thicker. Let's go back. Let's change it to a more contrasting color. F12, I'm going to go back to the menu here. Options, F5, line. Yeah, selected as orange, but it is certainly not orange. Let's try light green. That ought to shake it up. There we are. Ah, yes, light green. All right, so there's that. We've got our little boxes. Now what I want to do is I want to fill in some of these boxes. So I'm going to go back, hit 12. Now this is something that I found really cool that no, ah, you know what? There's one other program that does this one thing. And it was Mac Paint. Mac Paint does this. But I haven't found any other one that does. Let's take a look. So what is unique about Mac Paint and Deskmate is these little options here. I'm going to zoom in on this. Your fill options include textures like bricks or white bricks. We've got these little weirdo blocks and then that thing and this and it's kind of cool. And I remember as a kindergarten aged kid back in 1990 just being mesmerized by the colors. Colors invoke emotional responses and when you're a kid and you see vivid greens and blues and purples and you can kind of manipulate them on the screen it's kind of a, a soothingly weird um, thing I, I don't know how else to put it uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do um, we're gonna fill in so wherever this block wherever this cursor is is where it's going to fill so we're gonna fill this in with purple I'm going to go back to um, tab, brings you to the tool, or the, um, the fill selector. Tab brings you out of it. And there you go, we'll make that green. And I'm going to pick um, this color here. And there we go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now I want to fill the background with something a little more enticing. Let's do a light blue. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And there's our drawing. Now let's say I want to go back and we're going to select the spray gun here. I want to find a Tandy light pen. I'm going to start the search now. So as I expand upon this machine, I'm going to find me a printer, and I'm going to find me, and I just ordered the, um, the expansion kit for this thing. So that's going to happen. We're going to bring it up to 640K. We're going to put a storage device in it for the first time ever, an RS-232 port. Um, but I'm going to add a light pen, and I'll be able to draw. This is going to be awesome. It's like my childhood computer, but on steroids. Because this is all I had until 1995. Uh, this is all the. This is the only computer I owned. I'm gonna see what yellow looks like in spray paint. Oh yeah, that's not gonna show up on camera. Does it show up? Let's change the color. Let's do. Um, you can even spray paint with the textures too, which is kind of fun. Let's do uh, dark blue. Okay, dark blue. Tab out of that. Select it. Pretty cool. Look at that. Isn't it like awesome? I think so. I can print that out if I want to. All I've got to do is hit F12 to exit the, the uh, canvas, go to File F2, and if I wanted to print it, I could. Oh, it's another thing. Communications, if I go to the, if I go up to, oh yeah, here we go, mouse, I can select a mouse, 
if I had one. Maybe I'll be able to find a mouse. You have a joystick. You can use a joystick, by the way, for art paint. Pretty cool. I, I am very happy. This, this makes me happy. It runs, it does what it's supposed to, and we're gonna now try to fix the right protect problem. 